functional programming makes it way easier to have parallel execution, to essentially execute parts of your program on different machines or in different processes or in different threads. So I want to briefly talk about why this works. Parallelizing? Paralyzing, parallel, parallelizing, I guess. <clears throat> to understand why that is so, we first have to understand what a pure function is. So, stated very simply, a pure function has two rules. The first one is that, given the same arguments, the function must always evaluate to, i.e. return, the same result. So, if you have a function that takes two arguments, and you give it, say, a 1 and a 2, you should always, at any point in time, if you give it that, those two values, you should always get the same value back. Rule number two is that it should not have side effects. A side effect is essentially state outside of the function itself. So in other words, this means that your function can't, for example, write to disk or write to a database, which as you might guess, of course, makes it very hard to write a usable program. But that's a topic for a whole nother video. So let's talk about that some other time. So given that you have a function that follows these two rules, you have a pure function. So the question is then, if you have two functions that are pure, why is that easier to run par in parallel than if you would have two impure functions? So the point essentially is this. If you have two impure functions, it's entirely possible that one of the functions depend on state that the other function also uses or depends on. Think about it this way. If you have a function that reads values from a file and another function that writes values to a file, then depending on which order you do these things in, you may have different results. It's entirely possible. But if the functions were pure, then they can't have side effects, which means they can't do things such as write to the file, which means that you could take one thread and run one of the functions in, you could take another thread and run the other function in that. And thus, you have parallel execution. So, of course, you can always run anything in parallel. But the point is that when you have pure functions, you are certain that you don't have state that you are mutating between the functions. So to finish up with an example, think about this. You've probably also heard about the concept of map and map reduce. I don't want to dig into the details of map and reduce, so we'll dig into that in another video. But when you, when you are performing map and re map reduce, you're essentially performing two separate tasks. You are performing map and you are performing reduce. So map essentially means that you have a function and you run that function over a collection of inputs, i.e. you are taking the collection of, in of inputs and for each item in the collection, you pass that as a value to the function, right? Then you have a collection of the same length with all of the processed outputs, or the processed inputs, i.e. the outputs. Then you pass those to a reducer that takes, those, that takes the multiple values and constructs a new value from these, which could be a shorter list or a single number or a longer list. So the interesting part about MapReduce is essentially that if your map function, if the function that you are running over the inputs, or with the inputs as arguments, I should say, if that function is pure, then that means you can parallelize the running of that function. So if you have, which is why MapReduce obviously has become so popular. So if you have a massive data set of millions of millions of rows, it doesn't, of course it matters, but you can still get a very quick execution time because you can parallelize and run it on multiple threads. Just compare that to running it in sequence, which would take massive amounts of time more. So that's it. I hope you gained a further understanding of why fun functional programming, or more specifically, pure functions, help us run programs in parallel without running the risk of having one function mutate the state that another function depends on, which hypothetically or theoretically could cause erroneous output. So, that's it, and for more stuff like this, be sure to subscribe.